Hello, and welcome to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast. Every week, Talking Heads will bring you in-depth insight and analysis through the lens of sustainability on the topics that matter to investors. In this episode, we'll be discussing impact investing and private equity. I'm Daniel Morris, Chief Market Strategist, and I'm delighted to be joined by Sophie Mesha and Emmanuel Haumesser, Private Equity Fund Managers. Welcome, Sophie and Emmanuel. Hi, thanks for having us. Hi, guys. So we think firstly about impact investing, which I think it's safe to say is is still very much a developing uh, phenomenon business industry. Uh, And if I can perhaps try to explain what people have in mind when they look at impact investing is they appreciate on one hand, you know, they want to make investments, but they want to have perhaps a slightly better outcome than just investing in any kind of fund that's necessarily going to generate the highest return. So we want to have some kind of impact. Uh, and I'm sure part of what we're going to discuss today is what is the impact? What are the different types of funds or objectives or projects that we can look at? But I think what's particularly interesting about what you're doing is you're trying to do this within private equity, which from my understanding is is probably a pretty recent phenomenon, given that impact investing in the public space, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, is relatively recent. But let's start. Uh, at the beginning, as we say, so I'm going to ask you first, Sophie, uh, broadly speaking, how do you define impact investing? Sure. So, so so broadly speaking, in impact investing, investments are made like with the intention to contribute to a societal or environmental impact alongside the financial returns, as you mentioned. So very concretely, um, in those cases, investor is looking for companies, projects, activities, financial vehicles whereby a problem is identified and where a solution is brought to that problem and that it can be demonstrated. So at all times, the impact investor is looking for that Im- potential impact return. Um, so l- l- let's take an, an example. So it is academically proven that digitalization in the SKS sector improve treatment quality, patient safety, or access to care. So very naturally, an impact investor could be, for example, interested in a company that is providing products and services in digitalization to clinic and hospitals. It can be about, okay, how do, you, how, how do I provide an hospital with a medical documentation system that works better, that uh, manage patients' recalls more efficiently, or manages emergency room workflows. So we see more and more uh, companies offering interesting financial returns, but a really demonstrated concrete solution to a problem with, in the end, the intention to improve the quality of care that patients have access to. And and maybe finally, um, so impact investing works actually really well in private equity for for three reasons. The first one is that the investor has a strong influence on companies. It can really act on its transformation. The second one is the access to information, all the data about the company and its development. And finally, is investment horizon. So it's a long-term investment horizon, which enables the investors to drive change within the company over the life of its investment. We're ultimately talking about impact investing here. And I think what's really interesting is the angle between trying to achieve impact in your investments in a public space as opposed to a private equity space. Uh, Sophie, what changes fundamentally from your point of view when investing in impact private equity versus private equity more generally. Uh, And maybe you can talk about how that impacts the investment process, particularly in comparison with traditional asset management. Sure. So, you know, like the traditional investor balances at all times the financial risk and financial return that it is exposed to. And the impact investor in private equity, but also in, in other asset classes, is going to do the same thing, but it's going to manage two things in addition. One is the impact return it is trying to generate as well as the impact risks. So what are the elements that can challenge the realization of the impact return that the investor is trying to achieve? And managing those four elements rather than two um, is going to affect what you invest in and, and, and how you invest. There are three elements uh, of definition of what an impact investor is in comparison with a more traditional investor. And those three elements are intentionality, additionality, and finally measurement. So 
those three elements affect the investment process. Intentionality, to start with, uh, is about the fact that the capital is invested within with the purpose of creating uh, an extra financial impact. So the objective of the investor is to solve a societal challenge, and that is defined pre-investment. It can be demonstrated, and it affects the investment process. So you don't invest in the same things or in the same manner, because your objective is to create an extra financial return. That is to say that the impact is not a byproduct of your investment. It's something that you seek to achieve from the beginning. So second one is additionality. So this captures how the impact investor itself uh, can have an impact on the investment. So these are the elements that showcase how investor A, who is an impact investor, has more of an impact than investor B, who just invests in a company or a project that can be the same. And the channels of that additionality can be, can be done through engagement, by providing technical assistance, or through financial innovation, for example. So all those things that are in the hands of the investor, such as creating a specific vehicle to scale the impact of some projects. And finally, measurement. So the investor should set realistic, evidence-based goals for what the investments can achieve and use it to manage the impact performance over the light of the investment. So all those elements affect the nature of the investment process, and they also require resources and, and skills that are uh, that come and, and, and really broaden the scope of the skills that you want to have in a private equity team. Emmanuel, I mentioned at the beginning that Impact investing, on one hand, uh, is a newish phenomenon, but then again, it probably has been around for a while. But I think what's been notable recently alongside the pandemic is there's been a change in consciousness, uh, if you will, and investors and governments and people. And I'd be curious to hear from you, uh, how do you see the reasons for the rise in impact investing more broadly? And in particular, are there trends that you've noticed recently? Sure. Um, I would say that more than popularity, I would say that the whole investment chain from investor to stakeholders, they are increasingly aware that major risks and challenges that face the global economy are linked to sustainability. And as a consequence, they do have a negative impact on countries and industries. Just the World Economic Forum established a list of major global risks. And just to name a few, there are extreme weather conditions, failure of climate action, environmental damage is linked to human activities, biodiversity loss, etc. These are recognized by governments, private sectors, civil society, academia, etc. These are complex issues which require systemic approaches. That said, the capital needs to find a solution is massive. It is estimated at 6.7 trillion annually just to address challenges such as climate change, global inequalities, water scarcity. Also, very influential, you know, through regulations mostly, the public sector does not have sufficient means to provide alone solutions to these challenges. So the private sector has then a role to play. Investors ultimately have a role to play. Another point I would make is that Sustainability challenges transform economic sectors as a whole. So investors must take them into account from a risk perspective, but also because answering these challenges can also represent business opportunities, you know. And finally, I would say that the role of the private sector, and in particular uh, that of investors, is also called into question. The demand of the general public for responsible products at a minimum, and more importantly, with a positive impact, is growing. It's a sign of change in consumer behavior and it's backed and promoted by governance. Emmanuel, you mentioned some of the challenges we all face, uh, though we're talking about an investment vehicle. So Sophie, I'm gonna to turn to you uh, and ask the question, there are some perhaps more obvious areas when we think about where you could be investing, renewables, energy efficiency, healthcare. Where do you see the most interesting opportunities as you think about where to invest the funds that you have? Sure. So, so, you know, it's it's true that the growth of impact investing th thus far has been organic and fragmented. So that said, we see opportunities now across sectors and themes, with more and more private equity managers launching impact strategies. Now, some themes or sectors are more emerging than others, and as such, are more or less investable. So, healthcare, as you mentioned, is one for sure. 
especially after the pandemic and, and the stress it has put on the health infrastructure and, and showcasing its inefficiencies. So we see managers focusing on investing in companies that, that really compete on the quality of care, the access to care and its affordability. So that's, it is still a really important theme. So another one that is uh, less uh, looked at maybe is social care with strategies that are targeting companies that focus on providing products and services that solve challenges around the increasing share of the elderly in our populations. We also see opportunities around the, the, the rise and the increasing recognition of mental health as well. Another one is the increasing number of working parents. So this changes how you can conduct a family life and create some new needs, create some problems that companies can answer through their products and their services. Another sector is education. So providing learning and training opportunities to, to individuals at all stages of their careers and that are adapted to their personal situation uh, is another opportunity. Um, so that said, we find that the education sector is still quite early stage and we see more venture capital approaches there than uh, growth or buyout, for example. Uh, it is also the case of uh, sustainable food and the agriculture system quite early stage, as well as many propositions that are emerging from the blue economy. So finally, a booming theme is uh, circularity. So circularity is about material reuse, sustainable design of products, services, and, and supply chains. This area is emerging, but expected to grow significantly because it spans sectors and end markets and will be critical in the fight against climate change and to reduce the pressure on natural ecosystems. So. Uh, Quite concretely, for example, like the decarbonization of industrial processes is one promising theme that we see, and it is really investable and a massive opportunity for impact and, and critical, critical to our economies. If I can summarize then some of the points that you shared with us today, we're really talking about the, the, the intersection, the overlap uh, between two different concepts areas. On one hand, impact investing which you defined as investment that has alongside a financial return, a social or an environmental impact. And I really like the way that you said it, Sophie, that you're demonstrating you're achieving a solution to a problem. On the other hand, you have private equity, which is simply uh, a different way of investing, a much more active ownership model, much longer investment horizon, four to six years. And you pointed out that private equity in itself can certainly help diversification within a portfolio. And then the overlap then, why private equity works particularly well with impact investing is, number one, the fact that the investor can have particularly significant impact on the management of a company. Two, you have perhaps privileged access to information. And then finally, three, you have a longer term investment horizon. And when we talk about impact investing, that's often a very critical component. And then lastly, when we think about impact investing, it fits very much alongside everything we have in mind when we look towards sustainable investing broadly. Well, Sophie Emmanuel, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. That's it for this week's episode of Talking Heads. If you would like more information, please reach out to your BNP Paribas Asset Management contact or check out our Investors Corner blog. We recommend subscribing to Talking Heads on your favorite podcast channel. You receive your podcast episode every Monday afternoon. If you like the podcast, leave us a positive review and a nice rating. You've been listening to the BNP Paribas Asset Management Talking Heads podcast with me, Daniel Morris, Sophie Meshan, and Emmanuel Hamesser. We hope you will join us next week. And until then, take care. This podcast presentation includes a discussion on current market events and is not intended as investment advice or an offer of products or services by BNP Paribas Asset Management. Please keep in mind that the information and analysis in this presentation is only current as of the publication date.